Today I'm going to use the digitizing probe to make a three-dimensional file, a model file, of an antique carving for a chair back. The digitizing probe is a uh, device that fits into the collet on the spindle and has a uh, probe point. This particular probe point is two millimeters or you know, roughly a sixteenth of an inch. And there's an optical switch in here so that when the tip is touched, the switch sets off and tells the ShopBot software that the tip has just hit something. So the idea is to use the spindle and the shop butt to move this probe along the surface and take depth measurements at on a predefined grid. And that then can be converted into a, a digital file from which you can make additional carvings. The first step is to uh, figure out how to hold down the work. So I've uh, used an adaption of a, uh, a hold down jig that uh, Randy Johnson at ShotBot uses in his teaching. I've made it a little longer to facilitate this piece. <clears throat> the jig is uh, cut on the ShotBot, so by doing that, once the jig is screwed down and uh, some alignment pin dowels are installed, uh, it's not going anywhere, and because it's being cut on the ShotBot, we know exactly where the zero zero point for the work is. This particular jig, I made the zero zero point at two inches on the X, two inches on the Y. There's a wedge here with a four degree bevel on it that just fits on in here. You just tap it into place, and now the work is set, and you can put the repeated carving blanks in the same place. Uh, and in this case, the plan is to make 50 of these things. So every one of them will be registered properly. First things first though, disconnect the power from your spindle because you don't want this thing spinning. You don't want any way for this to turn on and start turning. I also turn off the switch on the variable frequency device so that I've got double protection to make sure no power gets to the, to the, to the spindle. Now the signal from the switch goes through the same plug that the Z0 act, uh, plate uses. So you disconnect the Z0 plate. You're not going to be using it for this. And you just connect the plug into that socket. You can tell that the switch is working because when it's plugged in and not touching anything, the number one input lights up. As soon as you touch the switch, the number one input light goes off. And that tells you that, that the switch is working. There's also a little LED light up inside here. And when you push on the switch, a little red, little red light comes on. And my first step is to figure out about where C0 is going to be. So I'm just going to bring the probe down till it's almost touching the surface. Now I just want to be a little bit high of the surface. So I'm just going to check to make sure But that clearance is good the entire length. So now I've got good vertical clearance. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit my ZZ, ZZ uh, on here. And that tells the system that that point is, is going to be my zero. Okay, now I'm going to tell the machine where the X0, Y0 is. And I want that point to be just a little bit beyond this carving so that I capture the entire carving. But I don't want to be I don't want to be doing too much probing on this big flat area which doesn't really help me. So I'll bring it fairly close to the edge of that flat area using the keypad. Okay. So I've got a pretty decent uh, just off the X and Y uh, cornered by a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and call that the XY zero using my Z2 command. Okay, so where that probe stylus is now is 
zero x, zero y, zero z. Okay, the next step is to measure the work. I want to tell the machine how big an area to probe. So I'm going to just measure from the probe stylus to a little over the opposite end, and that comes to 11 and 5 eighths. Do the same thing for the y direction. Next I'm going to tell the machine what the maximum depth that I needed to probe. So I'll just take a, a small scale, a little ruler here, about a quarter inch. A quarter inch ought to do it. So if I call it a quarter inch, that ought to be as deeper than the probe ever needs to go. And okay, so now it's time to set up the file. I'm going to use the tools menu and go to copy machine and tell the information box that I want to create a 3D object that I'm using a shock box probe that is normally closed and then I want to create this in the ShopBot SVP file format which I can later translate and use in Aspire to smooth things out. So we'll go ahead with that. Now we're going to go to the scan pattern size uh, I've already entered in the length of the scan, which is 11 and 5 eighths. The width of the scan is going to be 2 and 7 eighths. Safe Z clearance, since I've already zeroed slightly above the top of the surface, I don't need much clearance, so I only put in 50 thousandths. The maximum probing depth, this would be uh, if you had a hole or something that the probe might go into. No, not real necessary, but I'll go ahead and uh, put in a half an inch. That's negative down from the Z0. The X step over value, okay, the default here is 0 0.01, but that's going to take a very, very long time. And so I'm going to use 0 0.025, which is about a third of the diameter of the probe stylus. The probe stylus is 2 millimeters. So 0 0.025 is about a third of that. Same for the Y step over. And that will cut down on the time it takes to probe. This thing's going to go into the night easily anyway. Uh, and it's only early afternoon right now. Surface tolerance about a quarter of an inch. That means uh, you know the highest to the lowest uh, on this model. And uh, the dominant axis is the X axis. The uh, Needs, uh, system needs to know that to make the file. The output file and the probe tip diameter, which is for information only, is uh, 0 0.078 inches. See, it's moving along at a pretty good clip. Well, we've been into this for four and a half hours, and we're maybe three quarters of an inch along. Remember, we had to go two and seven eighths. So, I guess we'll take a look at this tomorrow morning. Well, it's now tomorrow morning. The uh, probing took 18 hours, 7 minutes, and 29 seconds to do. So it was a good thing to let it go all night. Now, what that gave us was a very small file. It's about 1.3 megabytes, believe it or not. Uh, there's over 53,000 points that were measured. And uh, that is a regular ShopBot part uh, file, an SBP file. So now what we got to do is we got to do a conversion of the file. So we go to Tools, and there's a Probe to Surface Translator. And the Probe to Surface Translator will, will modify or will convert the, uh, the Toolpath file that we have into a DXF file that we can then use in Aspire get it just like we want it before we then make a regular uh, you know cut file for that so uh, we'll open up the probe file okay and what this has given me is a little ghost image of what the uh, carving looks like and it actually looks pretty good so we, we, we likely have a good probe which is great since we spent 18 hours doing it now what we're going to do is we're going to save it as a DXS surface. Okay, we'll give it a name. Chair Probe 2mm DXF. And there we are. That was pretty quick. 
says done. Let's go ahead and take a look. Yeah, it ended up being about 8.8 .8 megabytes. We'll then go and put that into a spire and see how that works. Okay, so I opened up a spire and I imported the DXF file. And if you compare it to the actual, now bear in mind I didn't probe these flat spots here, so when I do this cut, I've got to make this on a larger piece of material. But you get the idea of how that looks. Very much like the original. And then I went ahead and ran a tool path using a 16th inch tapered ball nose bit. And there's what the tool path looks like. It's a lot of activity. But if we preview it, that's what we get. And again, this looks just like the original. I don't think I'm going to have to do any manipulation of this other than putting it on the proper size stock. There we go. It took an hour and 20 minutes to uh, carve this using a uh, 16th inch bit. Uh, and now we're going to go clean it up with a uh, wire brush and uh, ready to uh, put a little finish on it. I use a little brass wire brush to clean off all these little hangers honors that you have. Well here's the two pieces side by side. The new and the old. And uh, you can see that the the shop bot with a 16th inch bit doesn't pick up all the detail that you have in the original. Now there's a little uh, dimpling down here on the on the bottom, the base, that doesn't really show up. But uh, still there's some details missing. You don't have the veins particularly deep in the new as you do in the old. And a lot of that's due to the fact that you're using a 2 millimeter probe to uh, probe this surface and it doesn't get down into some of the narrow slots and so forth. You're also using a 16th inch bit. You know there's a couple of solutions. You could probe with a narrower probe uh, and then cut with a narrow narrow bit but this already took an hour and 20 minutes to cut so this could be really a long time. So I say just you know you, CNC carving is not hand carving. They're two different things, but you can marry the two. So by using a V-carved gouge, I can go in very easily put in some of these details very quickly on this and approach the, the same quality as the, uh, the original.